Okay, hi. The purpose of this tutorial is to um, demonstrate how to use the track changes feature on Microsoft Word. Now I've got Microsoft Word 2010 here and um, I used to have 2007 and to be honest for this feature using track changes it doesn't make a lot of difference. So to start off with you open up the document which you'd like to edit and you select the review tab. Now the review tab opens uh, a variety of choices tabs along the top here. The ones which I am interested in and the which I will demonstrate today are the new comment tab, the track changes tab, the accept change tab and the reject change tab. So the best way to show this in action is to demonstrate it. So I'm going to click track changes and select or activate track changes here. Now we can see that the tab changes to yellow, which means it's activated. And I'm going to edit this first sentence here to demonstrate how track changes works. So we're having a look at this first word, previous. We're going to change that to previous, previous scholars. Now you can see that every line where you make an edit, a line will appear in the left hand margin, a vertical line. Any characters or words which are deleted have a line through the middle of them. And any characters or words which are inserted have a line underneath them. And they're coloured as well to make it easier. So that's editing one word, previous scholars. Now here I'm going to add have been concerned make it passive and I'm going to add with here previous scholars who have been concerned with this issue and I want to say focus more so I'm going to delete focus and put it delete more rather and put it on the other side of focus so previous scholars who have been concerned with this issue focus more on investigating the consequences of devolution to the line. Now, because I know this student and the work she's been um, producing for me, I know that that's incorrect or I have a very good idea, but I'm not sure exactly what she means. So I'm going to add a comment here. And that opens up a bubble window in the right hand margin. And I'm going to suggest line managers as a possibility I'm going to put the L in lowercase and I'm going to highlight it in black to show that that's a word which I would like to insert rather than some advice okay um, so that first Part of the sentence is reading, previous scholars who have been concerned with this issue focus more on investigating the consequences of devolution to the line managers, my suggestion, but not determining the link between the extent of devolution to the line managers and organizational performance. So that's one sentence which has been proofread. And I can save this if I choose to, or I can make some changes. So while the document is active, I can come along here and I can delete these changes, or I can add some extra changes if I like to. Once the document has been completed, I have the choice to save it and it's good to save these documents when you're proofreading them early on so that you have a new file name so the original file was called SA Imran and I'm going to call this file SA Imran 1 and the one shows that this is the proofreading document with all the markups um, visible and that's going in my proofreading folder up here so now that's saved and we can see up here we've got the new file name SA Imran 1. 
Now it's important to give the file a new file name like saimran1 because I want to keep the original file as it was sent by this student in case I need to check at a later date. So that's why I rename it. Now you can continue working through the document like this and when you have finished proofreading the whole document you can select all the document by going control A or by using okay I'm not sure how else you do it. I go control A. In 2007 you could get a drop down edit menu and you could click select all. Anyway, I've selected it all, the text, by pressing control and A together. Now what I'm going to do is click accept here and I'm going to accept all the changes in the document. That means I've completed the document and I want to have two copies, one which I can read carefully to see if the changes are correct and one with the changes marked up for the student. So I highlight all the text, come up to accept and select accept all the changes in the document. Now that gives me this sentence here which has been accepted, all the changes have been accepted and when I complete the document and read through it again I will have a read down here, previous scholars who have been concerned with and okay I will take a look and I will look and see that that space shouldn't be there really. So I'm going to backspace it and then going to accept that change but not the whole document. Now I'm just going to accept one change okay so the spacing is correct. Now after you've accepted the changes in the document you want to save it to a different file name because otherwise you will overwrite all the changes. So I'm going to go up to file, save as and I'm going to very carefully because I don't want to lose all that proofreading markup which I've created in the whole document. I'm going to delete saimran1 file name and put saimran2 and I'm going to double check and I'm going to save. Now the file name has changed to saimran2 okay and that means that I also have the original document up here in my folder. In my proofreading folder I now have saimran the original document sent to me SA Imran 1 with all the markups and SA Imran 2 which has been accepted. <clears throat> now when you send this second document and first document back to the proofread to the author of the document it's useful to turn off the track changes by pressing the tab again and that means that they can work with this document without having the markups shown in red or a different color. So when you've finished, it's good to deselect the track changes and save again. So when the document opens, it will open as default <coughs> with the um, document able to be edited. For example, we can insert and delete text from this document without the markup showing. Now the only other thing it's useful to <coughs> excuse me mention is these comments boxes are very handy for giving feedback to the author and giving suggestions of text which they could use okay but sometimes you might want to delete a comment and if you want to do that you put your cursor over the comment right click and you can come down to here in the window and select delete comment and that will take it away and then if you want to save the changes without that comment, you save here again. And what I do with my students, I send them two documents back. SA Imran 1 with all the markups shown. Let's see if I can find it here.
OK, so I'm going to send two documents back to Imran. I'm going to send the first one with all these changes um, accepted, all these changes highlighted rather. And I would probably recorrect that spacing mark there. OK, and because that's my change, I would accept that. And I would send Imran back this document with all the changes marked up. And I would also send him back this document where the changes have been accepted. OK, that's it. Um, I hope this has been useful for you. And uh, if you have any questions about proofreading, you can contact me at www.englishlc.com. OK, or info at englishlc.com. All one word. Thanks very much.